Hello, welcome to Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. I am Robert, the narrator, and thanks for joining me for another in-car edition of Confessions. Gotta get videos done uh, whenever you can, so I'm in my car again. So this episode of Confessions, I want to talk about taking the fight out of rules debates in my game. As I have been running Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition for my local group, I have come across some of the things that I don't necessarily enjoy about game mastering. I guess particularly for my local group who are uh, friends that I have known for 30 plus years. And I was going to do a video about some of the things that may not be so great about running for really close friends, some things that uh, can happen during a game that maybe strangers or acquaintances wouldn't necessarily do. I think I still may do that video, but this is going to be a part of it. And one of the things that is not really <laughs> fun for me uh, is rules debates and um, the fact that we are friends. We are not shy about debating the rules and not letting really letting the game master be the final arbiter of rules and decisions and so forth and because we are friends and we naturally interact and in, uh a kind of one upsmanship de uh debating fashion that's just how we are as friends that really gets um uh increased during a, a role-playing game, when, when we're role-playing. And I, I also suspect that we have one or two players in our group who also use rules debating uh, and debating rulings as a tactic because they are very much, uh, I guess, in the mindset of winning at role-playing games. And I'm pretty sure... <laughs> that we have a couple of players in my local group who use rules debating as a tactic to gain an advantage because they look at the relationship with the game master as an adversarial uh, relationship. So I wanted to um, nip this issue in the bud. So this is a uh, technique that I am using, and maybe this will be a helpful tip for you as a game master as well. Because it got to the point where I was um, uh, kind of tired of arguing about Vampire instead of actually playing it and running it, what I said to my friends is, okay, what we're going to do is, is I am going to make rulings as normal, the normal paradigm as it exists between uh, player and game master. I'm still going to make my rulings, but what I'm going to say is my rulings are not final. They are kind of just suggestions. <laughs> and I'm giving you as players the ability to override me. So if I say your character should lose a point of humanity because of what you have done in the game, you can say to me, no, I don't think that's, that that ruling is correct and just override me. And then that means that you, you have over, you have overridden me and it, and what I said, uh, happens, uh, does not happen. And I think that this technique or tip does a few things. One thing that I think it does is for the players in our group who I suspect use uh, rulings debates as a tactic to um, get an edge in what they look at as an adversarial relationship with the game master, it immediately sucks all of the fun out of winning a debate if there is no debate. <laughs> so if you say, no, I don't think that's how it goes, and you have the power to overrule me, uh, now it all of a sudden is not fun for me to use that tactic because that tactic doesn't exist. I can overrule you any time I want. And for players who aren't necessarily using it as a tactic, but are just very argumentative <laughs> individuals, it removes all of the challenge from the game. And even for the most argumentative player, 
generally, I think the majority of players are there for uh, the challenge at some level. So when you give a player, even if they don't use uh, rules debating or rulings debating as a tactic, most players are there to be challenged. So when they know they can snap their finger and remove all challenge from the game, that isn't fun and that will tend to make them not want to argue when they know that they have the ultimate power. So I think for me, it is a fantastic solution when I don't want to spend a great deal of time just arguing about the game instead of playing the game. And when you give somebody more power, it's hard for them <laughs> to uh, to complain that the GM is being uh, heavy handed or the GM is is uh, maybe on a power trip when they make rulings. If he has said, no, 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 you have all of the power. So overrule me and something else that um, I've done and, and this, you know, <laughs> in fairness, this man, I don't know if this seems passive aggressive or whatever you want to call it, but also what I have, um, this method doesn't work across the board because for instance, in vampire, obviously the game vampire, the masquerade is a game that's not about, oh man, it is awesome being a vampire. It's cool. I have all of these cool powers. The whole idea of Vampire the Masquerade, which I have, when I have played it in the past, I really didn't feel this. It wasn't an aspect of the game uh, that was really um, uh, paid paid attention to, really. And I'll talk more about that when I'm when I review Vampire the Masquerade in a few episodes. But something that makes this technique not work is there are things that are disadvantageous about being um, a vampire in Vampire the Masquerade. If you're going to run the game rules as written, you can lose humanity and become less human. And that is a disadvantage. So where the problem comes in is I do not believe it's fair if some players are going to overrule those disadvantageous aspects of the game for other players to adhere to those disadvantageous uh, mechanics. So what I what I've said is, we um, if you're if people are not going to abide by my rulings to on the things that are disadvantageous mechanically in Vampire, then we should remove those aspects from the game. And I've kind of said, you know, I, I'm remind the guys that if we remove all of those disadvantageous things, because we're going to have players who will overrule me and some players are probably going to feel bad that they're adhering to these disadvantageous mechanics. It's really stripping vampire of what makes vampire vampire. So that's kind of a little bit of a, a guilt trip to be, to be completely honest with you. So sometimes if, if you couch these, uh, these things in um, kind of a uh, a way that can make a player feel a little bit guilty uh, for their less than optimal behavior. Sometimes that can be a good tactic as well. So maybe if you have some argumentative players or players who use rulings debating as a tactic to gain an advantage because they feel that they, their relationship um, with a uh, game master is supposed to be an adversarial relationship, maybe this tip can help. Give the player the power and take and take all of the all of the benefit <laughs> of them debating and trying to argue uh, with the game master. Take the take the power out of it, uh, or or the um, uh, the good parts that they may enjoy about that, and see what happens. So that is my that is my tip. Hopefully, it will work for you. Hopefully. That is um, something that can help you. And in and, and the uh, comments below, what do you think about that tactic to reduce argument when you're playing with friends and they feel like because we're all friends, we don't necessarily have to be polite and not argue about things. Uh, what, what do you think about that? Say, hey, now you have all the power to overrule me. So what are you going to do with it? Uh, let me know in the uh, comments below, please. And I'll uh, talk to you later.